Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Barbara Arnold, and I would like to introduce Tyson Vitali, running for Alder from District 16. Tyson, as we begin, uh, please tell our viewers a bit about how your educational, your vocational, and civic experience has prepared you for this position and why you decided to run for Alder. Yeah, so um, my name is Tyson Vitale, like you said. Hello, everyone. I'm running for District 16 Alder, which is on the far east side of Madison. Um, I am decided to run because, uh, you know, community members, uh, especially East Siders, have invested in me and I'm ready to you know, invest back in my community um, and uh, make, you know, the changes that we need to make as a city to really, um, you know, be the best city that we need to be. Um, I'm running because I grew up uh, off of um, Vernon Avenue uh, from when I was 12 years old on. Uh, I've been in the district um, or literally right across the street on the far east side I grew up. And not only did I just grow up on the east side, I grew up in the two Madisons that we always talk about. Um, I grew up uh, poor and low income. Uh, and, you know, what people would be called an at or what would be called an at risk uh, kid um, and, uh, you know, got was able to get out of poverty and um, have lived throughout the district since um, in Richmond Hills or uh, in the Glendale neighborhood and uh, want to make sure that we can really bridge that gap of the two Madisons that we do have today um, and, you know, finish the conversations that we've been having for the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and up to now uh, in regards to the racial disparities that we see as a city. And really, um, I, I see an opportunity right now to, to really, really uh, move forward on those issues in a way that we never have as a city. And I'm really excited to contribute uh, towards that change on council. Good. All right. Thank you, Tyson. Thank you. Uh, what issue or issues have you identified particularly as being of primary concern to the residents of District 16? And how would you approach tackling them? Yeah, so the biggest issue that I hear is um, safety. Um, and it goes hand in hand with, well, the fact is safety goes hand in hand with opportunity. Um, crime, lack of safety, and the disparities we face as a, a, a city today are perpetuated by those gaps in opportunity. Um, and again, growing up in a single parent, low income home uh, on Madison's east side, um, I, I really do know firsthand the experience of what it's like. Um, number one, to grow up as one of the most at risk kids here in the city, but number two, to feel unsafe you know, in the neighborhood that we call home. And everyone in District 16 um, deserves uh, the right to feel safe in the district. Um, and when we invest in our residents, we can ensure that Madison is a great place to live, work, play, and raise a family. And I, I believe that uh, bridging those lack of opportunities um, and investing in our most marginalized youth actually is directly correlated uh, with safety. Um, we can do that by um, housing initiatives to make it easier to rent, buy, and maintain um, housing security, community assets like libraries, neighborhood centers, and green spaces to make sure our neighborhoods are encouraging places for growth, and violence prevention programs such as mentoring um, our most at-risk kids to ensure that we are encouraging thoughtful and productive citizenry, um, and really targeting the root causes that underlie the challenges of safety in order to move forward um, here in the city. All right, thank you. Uh, there will be an advisory referendum on, on the ballot in April about a number of modifications to the Common Council, including uh, the, uh, changing the number of members, uh, making it full time, and changing the term of office. Which of the ideas being advanced do you embrace? Uh, why or why not? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, I, I've been hearing this a lot, and I think that there's some things that we do want to separate out um, that are in this plan. Um, largely, uh, I have read the TFOG's recommendations, uh, and uh, I do support, after knowing and talking with a lot of different alders that have served for many years and just community members, and, and really looking into this and thinking about it closely, I do support a full-time council. Um, why is because 
uh, right now, part-time is not really part-time, um, you know, to be an effective alder for, uh, at least for my district, I know, but for a lot of most districts, it's going to be 20 plus hours a week at least. Um, and, uh, you know, that's just to be a productive, let alone or good alder. <laughs> so I, I, I do think that we need a full-time council. What I struggle with is the, um, lowering the number of alders to 10 from 20. That is something I am not for. Um, I'm not for that because I do believe there is a place in ensuring that all of you know our unique and um, uh, wonderful neighborhoods and residents are represented in the communities and enclaves that live here in the area. And I don't think uh, you know that lessening the amount of alders is going to best do that. Um, and I think that right now, um, keeping the number as it is, uh, but uh, figuring out in the budget uh, how to keep the same amount of alders while uh, having them be full-time is the best approach here. All right. The third question is uh, homelessness, evictions, and lack of affordable housing are vexing problems for Madison that seem to have been exacerbated in this time of COVID-19. Uh, what ideas would you advance or support to help solve these problems? Yeah, I mean, this is a huge issue. We have to, uh, you know, I always, I always say, tell folks, you know, I don't know about you, but I want our, um, you know, firefighters, our nurses and our police officers to be able to live here in our city and be able to afford it. Um, I like them as my neighbors. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, we really have to solve this issue. I think we have to look at everything, honestly. I think we have to really look at and take a serious look into, you know, how our zoning policies have potentially played into that, um, alternative new or new ways um, uh, to tackle this issue from different funding sources. Unfortunately, um, the we, we do have to probably get someone innovative here and then this area because uh, a lot of state statutes and the Republican legislator has restrained local municipalities and how they can raise um, revenue, but also how we can deal with our housing crisis too, um, which a lot of folks don't know. So um, I would be in ready to really look into this issue hard and, and figure out how we can address it in a way that we haven't before. And also really look into results oriented approaches and make sure that we're not investing money into something that doesn't work um, or that we're not giving tax incentives to, you know, uh, developers that aren't actually contributing, um, et cetera. All right. Thank you. With the selection of a new police chief and the creation of a community oversight board, there is a lot of attention focused on policing and criminal justice, both from the perspective of racial equity in law enforcement and the concern of many citizens that you alluded to in your opening statement that in fact crime, especially car thefts, and home burglaries is increasing and that police response is inadequate. How would you deal with these major concerns? Yeah, by having the conversation. And I'm really glad that we're having that conversation now. Um, I'm glad that this issue that is um, a really hard issue, I, I don't only just see it as an issue, I see it as an opportunity to really come forward and move forward as a city. And um, I, I think that we have to understand where each other are coming from for us to really move beyond, um, you know, the disparities and the, the also this lack of trust in our community between uh, some community members. I know this very well being a black biracial kid that grew up in the city. There is a, a serious true disconnect um, that I, I just don't think a lot of folks understand, honestly. Um, uh, when you don't have that sense of belonging, when you don't have, uh, you know, that sense of community, when you're growing up here, um, especially if you're a young black kid, um, I mean, the chances of you being able to, you know, be successful in our community are really low. And what does that happen? What happens? And what are the results of that? And this is why I was talking about getting to the root causes of things is um, the lack of safety that we see. Um, we can not just solve this issue uh, in the traditional ways that we have before 
Uh, we can have a police officer at the end of every block, but crime will just go to the middle of the street. It's not going to get rid of crime. You have to get to the root causes of crime to really, or, or to crime and safety to really tackle this issue effectively. Right. Madison businesses of all kinds have been severely stressed during the past year. Uh, what, if anything, would you propose to support business revitalization? Yeah, um, being someone who is starting a small business myself, I, I feel this one. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, uh, during this time of COVID-19 and uncertainty, we need to ensure the protection and, and success of the community of small businesses and aspiring and entrepreneurs. Um, and we need an other who's uh, going to continue um, making sure that, you know, folks are protected during this unprecedented time. I am for the continuation of the small business equity and recovery grant started in 2020, but most of all, because we are on the far east side, and a lot of times we don't get our fair share with a lot of these grants, I am also for ensuring that that is fairly distributed throughout the city and not just downtown. Um, on the far east side, our, essential, uh, our small businesses are essential to our community and we deserve a fair shot at success. And I will do everything I can to make sure that we do um, that, we do that and uh, promote the you know, fair distribution of the business, small business equity and recovery grant started and the continuation of it in 2020, okay. from 2020. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question number six, uh, what measures should Madison take to increase our city's environmental sustainability? As many measures as we can. Um, I know that there, 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 I'm in talks with uh, uh, like current sitting alders about this right now. Um, and this is not an easy issue. Um, and a lot of the, you know, things that we can do, do cost money, right? And so I, I really do wanna look into what is what are the most effective measures that we can get the bit most bang for our buck? Uh, again, wanting to take a really results oriented approach of like, what can we do as a city um, uh, to really, really move us forward and make sure that we're a greener city while also being not just a pipe dream and being able to afford it, especially during the reality of the budget um, that we're going to be having to do. The 2022 budget, we're going to have to make some really, really hard decisions. And so um, what I'm basically saying is yes, absolutely. I think we should take as many measures as possible, but make sure that we are getting our bang for our buck for any initiatives that we're doing and that they really are making us more green as a city and um, do those. <laughs> Final question. Uh, on what committee or committees uh, would you like to serve and why? Good question. Um, the, PFC because I are the yeah I believe it's PFC there's always for some context there's always over 100 committees. <laughs> uh, and in the TFOGS recommendation I believe it as uh, where they're going to actually consolidate some of these committees. Um, the parks uh, committee I, I would love to be on I love parks and green spaces the PFC and public safety. A committee I would be honored to be on because it is a very important issue for my district um, and really want to bridge that gap when it comes to talking about safety in general in this city. Okay. And now we like a concluding statement. Uh, what would you like to say, Tyson, uh, to the viewing audience uh, as we complete this interview? Yeah, well, um, thank you everyone for uh, listening today and I hope to earn your vote on February 16th and then uh, uh, on April 6th. Uh, if you'd like to hear more information, my website is tysonforalder.com or you can like me on Facebook, um, Tyson for Alder. Uh, and uh, I am a lifelong Madisonian, and I've been on the Far East Side and lived on the Far East Side uh, for uh, since I've been 12 years old. And um, this community invested in me, and I'm really invested to give back, uh, ready, ready to invest back and represent uh, the Far East Side and be a, make sure to be a fighter for the Far East Side, who uh, really makes sure that we as a district and our this side of town get our fair share. Um, and we become a more equitable city that works for everyone. All right. I want to thank uh, Tyson Vitale for speaking with us and uh, the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. As with every election, please vote. Uh, the spring primary is Tuesday, February 16th, and the general election, April 6th. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you 
for joining us. Thank you.